I have just received a phone call from Mr. Taman saying that my team and I had put up a vigorous campaign and I in turn congratulated him on a magnificent victory. When I came forward to stand for the presidency, I said that my number one goal was to ensure that the people of Singapore has redeemed their right to vote in this presidential election. I think I have accomplished that goal because the presidential election did take place today. I also said that Mr. Taman had mentioned that he would like to have a contest so that when he is elected, he has a mandate from the people of Singapore. I'm delighted for him and I'm very glad for him that he has indeed earned a mandate from the people of Singapore. So I congratulate him. So this is a moment for me to say thanks, to express my gratitude. First of all, I want to thank the people of Singapore. 400,000 or more of them for their faith in me and who had voted for me. Second, I want to say thank you to my character referees and also to my assenters who supported me in my nomination. These Singaporeans put their names behind my name and lifted me up from a relative nobody to a somebody. Thirdly, I want to thank my campaign staff, my advisors, my security officers, my young social media warriors, my car drivers, and fourthly, I want to thank my immediate family of my children, their spouses, my grandchildren. And I want to thank my brothers and sisters, led by my fourth brother, Charles, and my nephews and nieces. Fifth, I'd like to thank my two beloved pets, my dog, Cotton, and my cat, Max, for comforting me and being there for me always. And certainly, I owe the deepest gratitude to my fiancée, Sybil who sacrificed her private life to walk with me and stand by me. I want to thank, too, 
my father-in-law Paul, who by his quiet presence in all my walkabouts was also a great source of support and encouragement. When I came forward, I also set as my goal to set an example for good and capable people to come forward and serve our country in the presidency, the government or the opposition. Another goal was for me to thank my country for what my country has given me. I will continue to serve my country until my last breath. So to the people of Singapore, I wish to say that the relatively low percentage of votes that I obtained was the price that I willingly pay in order to give Singaporeans the opportunity to exercise their right to vote. That was the ultimate objective when I set out to stand for the presidency and I'm glad that I have achieved that goal. I wish Mr. Taman every success in the presidency and I'm confident that he will make a very good president. Thank you. I have decided to concede to Taman because I do not want to keep all of you from your bedtime. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, there is no need to wait a few more hours in order to get the final result. The result is clear. And I want to uh, say thank you once again to the people of Singapore. I will just take maybe a couple of questions. Mr. You said that in the NUSS forum that if you were to lose, you would win your life back. <laughs> so can you tell me more about what are your plans after this? Well, I came out of, uh, <clears throat> you might say, my retirement you know, to achieve this goal of honouring the presidency, that we do not have another walkover, that we have an election, that the new president will have a mandate from the people. So I'm very happy that I have uh, I've accomplished that goal. What do I do now? Well, there are plenty of things to do. <laughs> As you can see, you know, I, um, um, <clears throat> I want to go back to, um, as, as you say, my life, right? my, my private life. Um, <clears throat> I would like to go back to my company, which I started eight years ago, because that is how I hope to continue contributing in a tangible way you know, to developing Singapore as a financial centre. 
And of course, I'm looking forward to going back and spending more time with Cotton and Max because I have neglected them <laughs> over the last two months. No, I don't think I could have done anything uh, differently. I think I will leave it to, um, to the political analyst to analyze you know, why the result has turned out the way it has. Right? But one thing I will say for sure, and that is I have discovered in this campaign the power of social media. I've also discovered the power of our younger generation of Singaporeans. Because I started with a very small team of people and I conducted my campaign with a very small team of people. One chief of staff, which was civil, three advisors, four senior executives. But we were supported by an amazing group of young people here from Gush Cloud. They were the people who inspired me. They were the people who helped me to convey my message to a whole generation of younger Singaporeans. And one of the greatest satisfactions that I have derived was the many young Singaporeans who came up to me on my walkabouts and say how much they had learned from what I was teaching them to the TikTok videos that I made about our reserves, about investment management, the meaning of non-partisanship, so, in a sense, although my journey to the presidency has ended, but the, my, the journey to a more enlightened electorate, especially the younger generation, that journey has just begun. I don't think Singaporeans rejected the idea, the principle of non-partisanship. I think the seed has been sown. The word non-partisanship will now enter the vocabulary of governance in Singapore. And my hope is that this presidential election when I stood on the principle of non-partisanship will grow over time and that I think will contribute to the further maturing of the political process in Singapore. Did I expect such a large uh, majority for Mr. Taman? Well, Mr. Taman has a formidable political record. So 70% is not far from what he achieved in Jurong. And to be able to do it at the national level, I think is even more laudable. Thank you very much. And I wish all of you a very good night.